All right, so I wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about an aspect of HIV and AIDS that uh, we don't typically talk about too much, and it's it's rather a complex topic. Uh, you know, when, when you learn about HIV and AIDS in, in the classroom setting, what do you typically learn about? You know, you, you learn about the biology of HIV. Uh, you know, if you're in a biology class, you may spend some time talking about how HIV, the human immunodeficiency virus, attacks helper T cells and ultimately impairs the immune system's ability to fight off other infections. Um, and in fact, it's worse enough you, you learn that a person can develop AIDS, where the immune system is so weakened that an individual is at an extremely high risk of death from just basic infections. And then you may also have spent some time talking about the clinical aspects of HIV. You know, how can, how can HIV be transmitted from one person to another? Uh, of course, we know that's only due to the sharing of body fluids through unsafe sex, unclean needle use, like sharing needles, um, and mother-to-child transmission, um, also known as uh, a vertical transmission, um, which can happen through the blood or through breast milk. Um, and, you know, typically these are some of the causes of HIV infection that, that are talked about. And, and we learn that if somebody's infected with HIV, they can take a whole host of medications called antiretroviral therapies or ARTS that will slow down the progression of HIV into AIDS so well that by today's standards that someone can live in a lifespan that is uh, rather equivalent to that of somebody who isn't really infected at all. So that's how, how far our medications have gone. So you learn about the biological aspects of HIV and you learn about the clinical aspects. Um, but there's really one thing that hasn't really been discussed too often in the classroom and it's the stigma of HIV infections, particularly in developing nations. Now, there are fairly few studies that have been done to really capture the essence of the causes of stigma and, you know, what that stigma looks like in, in certain developing nations. Um, but a fairly complex and comprehensive report has been published by the International Center for Research on Women, um, which I've included in the comment box for those of you who are interested. Um, but I kind of wanted to, to, to show you a simplified way of thinking about the stigma of HIV infection. But before we even go into, into the causes of stigma, you might be wondering, well, let's take a step back. What is, what is stigma? Um, stigma has a number of different definitions, but I think uh, a definition that kind of sums it up well is um, a differentness that is associated with group affiliation, uh, whether it be a group of people with physical differences, moral differences, or differences in origins, like, you know, race and religion. Um, and so really stigma encompasses this idea of turning differences into inequities, uh, putting people who are on uh, you know, who are different on some way uh, in, on, on a lower social level, leading to an exclusion of that group and a pretty low ability of that group to fight back against that stigma. And so in this case, what we're talking about is the stigma towards individuals who are HIV positive. And, uh, you know, we'll talk about what that stigma looks like um, in the next video, but I, I did want us to talk a little bit about why why are people who are HIV positive stigmatized, you know, and, and what is the source of the stigma towards people who are HIV positive in developing nations? And and then we can kind of take a look at what that stigma looks like and what impact that, that might have on the treatment of these patients. And you might as well say, well, I'm sure the, the cause of the stigma uh, kind of differs from region to region around the world, and you might be correct to some degree, but uh, for the most part, research has, has found that there are some themes that we can kind of derive that are consistent among cultures and countries about HIV-related uh, stigma. So let's simplify a rather complex topic with a diagram. We have stigma at the center of this diagram, of course, HIV-related stigma, uh, so we're specifically talking about HIV here. Um, for HIV, there are really two drivers of stigma, and the first is fear. Many people in developing nations, um, such as a lot of African countries and countries like Vietnam, where HIV is, is very prevalent in um, impoverished communities, uh, there's a sense of fear towards HIV and people who are HIV positive, and 
this really stems from from two other things two things that lead to this fear so you can see that the first is a lack of knowledge about how hiv is transmitted from person to person or more importantly how hiv is not transmitted so a lot of times community members aren't well educated about hiv um, and that it can only be transmitted through body fluids. And because they lack this knowledge, they sort of overcompensate by exhibiting exaggerated levels of precaution. Uh, you know, there are reports of people who are unwilling to share uh, nail clippers or even scissors that have cut an HIV positive individual's hair, um, avoiding people on the street who they know are HIV positive, um, oftentimes not even touching or sitting next to somebody who is HIV positive. And, and what's interesting is even when people people are educated about HIV and AIDS and how it's transmitted, they still have this preoccup uh, preoccupation with uh, really nearly impossible routes of transmission because they don't fully understand how HIV is not transmitted. And so there's this continuous fear that is propelled by um, a lack of comprehensive education about the transmission of HIV that propels this fear towards people who are HIV positive. So fear is also engendered within communities due to what's known as fear-based messaging with various local campaigns that show just how debilitating HIV and AIDS can be and how it can lead to quite a painful death. And so with these messages that go out within communities, people have this magnified fear of HIV and contracting HIV. So they're going to stigmatize and separate themselves from HIV positive individuals as a self-protecting mechanism. And so, like I said, so fear is that first driver of stigma. And so the second sort of driver of stigma is morals and values. Uh, stigmatizing people who act immorally or against society's code is pretty common amongst most cultures. And it's, it's interesting because many illnesses like HIV and AIDS are associated with moral transgressions. Uh, and you know, if you, if you think about how HIV is transmitted, some of the common means are through behaviors that are, are looked down upon, you know, like, uh, drug use or unsafe sex, particularly, um, if it's premarital sex. Uh, and so because HIV infection is often associated with behaviors that may be considered immoral in some communities, uh, some people who are HIV positive uh, are stigmatized for this for this immor immorality. And so I hope this provides a sort of broad picture about some of the sources of stigma towards HIV positive individuals in developing nations. Uh, it's, it's this fear that is propagated by, uh, one, a lack of comprehensive knowledge of the transmission, uh, and two, by, by those fear-based messages. And that's, that's coupled with the community morals and values, um, that sort of create this stigma towards HIV positive uh, individuals. And so, you know, in the next video, we're going to talk about, well, you know, Sahil, what is this, what is this stigma? You know, how are people who are HIV positive treated differently in their communities or, or, or socially excluded? And, um, there's, there's actually quite a lot of, um, qualitative research out there to, in, in, you know, in which people talk about their experiences as HIV positive individuals in their communities. And, um, there's, there's some very interesting, interesting accounts of, of what what that stigma looks like and I, and I hope you'll kind of um, carry forward into the next video to learn about that um, but in a sense we can kind of broaden this model to further encompass other illnesses as well um, such as mental illnesses or infectious diseases so while there may be some differences um, you know between communities or between illnesses really big drivers of stigma are fear and morals and values that a community has and so again, in the next video, we're going to talk about um, what that stigma actually looks like. We're going to carry forth with this model and uh, look at the different forms of stigma. And then uh, we'll, we'll talk about how, how that stigma influences um, the, the treatment, uh, like the, the biological treatment of individuals who are HIV positive and what that means for a community um, in terms of uh, prevalence of HIV. So uh, I hope to see you in the next one.